Well, welcome to Church 360 Unite, a complete overview webinar of our church website builder. This is from Concordia Technology Solutions. My name is Peter Frank, and I am the manager of Concordia Technology Solutions. There's my contact information there. You're welcome to email me or call me at my office at any time. I've been with the uh, department for going on four years now. I, for a while, have been saying three years, and I realize that I'm actually much closer to four. So I've been working with Church 360 since it was uh, first release, and it's um, just been a fun project to dig deeper and deeper on, and so doing these webinars has always been a, a great joy for me. So today we have a special uh, guest presenter or a co-presenter, um, Anna Johnson, will be joining me. So Anna, I'm going to go ahead and turn on your audio. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Hi, everybody. Hi. Well, welcome to the webinar. Anna, I appreciate you joining me. I'll put up your slide here. Anna is our assistant marketing manager, and she has a lot of experience working in churches. She got a background in deaconess studies, and then you've done youth groups and done church websites with each of those. So thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. No problem. Her contact information is up there as well. And I'll be leading the, the first part of this. And then Anna will be going through an example of how to use Church 369 in a very practical and, and timely way. We'll be talking about Vacation Bible School. So both of us, oh, actually, before I go to that slide, I've got my housekeeping slide. So few housekeeping items. We'll have 60 minutes for the presentation. I know we set up 90 minutes um, on the uh, registration form. The last 30 minutes will be for question and answers. So if you have any questions um, during this time, please don't hesitate to submit them. And I think that is my next bullet point there. Yeah, ask questions throughout. Um, so as you're thinking about it, just send it out there. Um, while Anna's presenting, I'll be monitoring the questions and, and see if there's any I can answer. And any that we don't get to um, during the presentation, we'll get to during those 30 minutes uh, Q&A. And I'll also probably answer some of the ones that we do get to just so everybody can benefit from the answers. So the last housekeeping item is that the recording will be shared. So we'll be putting this up on our YouTube video, our YouTube channel, um, and we'll send you an email with it as well. So you'll be able to rewatch any parts you may have missed, or um, share it with people in your church who weren't able to attend. So Anna and I both work for Concordia Publishing House, and this is one of my uh, favorite pictures from our history. So this is from the 1904 World's Fair. And I like to share this because I like to show our, our rich history of serving the church. At the time, we uh, had this award-winning display. That was a fun fact from our history. We had uh, we'd been around for 35 years, and we are still going strong today. And we have been providing resources from the church uh, for the, uh, almost 150 years now. And we always have provided resources that are with the time. So we were founded to get the news out about our church body, and it was written on paper and in German. And today we are now working on things, of course, in, but also technology-wise and in software. And so we've been developing software for churches for over 30 years now, since 1984. That uh, picture is a view from CPH in present day. That is our innovation center, kind of our Google-esque working area. And it's our, our place for brainstorming and collaboration. But we've been producing software for churches since 1984. And um, I, I give you this history of CPH because there's always some confusion about where does CTS, Concordia Technology Solutions, fit in. And we are the church administration division of Concordia Publishing House. And we go with that name because most people don't think of software when they think of publishing. And so we want to make sure that people think of us first. But we are all one and the same with Concordia Publishing House and have been um, a big part of this company for, for many years now. So today we'll be talking about Church 360 Unite. And Church 360 Unite is just one product in our Church 360 suite. And we call it Church 360 because it's complete church management. So in addition to Church 360 Unite, which is our website builder, we have Church 360 members, our church uh, management software, and Church 360 Ledger, our church finance software. So um, we will not be focusing on those two today, but I just want to make sure I made it clear how it all kind of fits together. 
So Church 360 Unite is a church website builder, and it focuses on a few main areas. First off, it is your website. I want to make that clear. And it's definitely, first and foremost, your church website. But it also can be your church's blog, your church's member hub, where people log in and interact with each other. You can use it for file sharing. It can be your master church calendar. And lastly, you can use it for sending mass emails. So it's really much more than just a website because you have all these other tools in it. And that's why we call it Church 360 Unite, because it takes these other tools and it unites them together in just one central place, one central online resource for your ministry. And it's um, built so that you don't have to be an expert at any of these things to use it. You don't have to know HTML or CSS to build a website. Um, you don't have to go through the much process to set up a blog. You just click Add Feed and you're, you're ready to go. So um, there's a lot of different things that we'll touch on today, uh, including each one of these items here. So a few um, highlights of Church 360 Unite. It's online. It's a website, of course, that's online. But that means you can access it anywhere. And all of our themes are responsive. So you can log on to your website on your mobile device, on your tablet. It works well. Uh, we provide all the secure hosting and backups. We have a, a team of people who are constantly monitoring it for performance, for security. Um, we store your backups on a nightly basis and we keep those backups for a month. So if anything were to ever happen, we could recover it. And we haven't had to use those, um, which is always a good thing that we don't have to go into it. We hope to never have to use our backups, but we do test them periodically. And you don't have to worry about that because we're taking care of it. You also get the free updates and support and training that's all provided. Training like what we're doing today is included in your fee. So um, I. This leads me into a few assumptions that I have about you. So first and foremost, I'm assuming you're at least familiar with church websites. Um, we're not going to go into the very basics in terms of the content that you provide, but this is about the tool that you use to build those websites. So I hope you're at least familiar with what a website is, <laughs> how you can use it for churches. Um, but that's one of my assumptions. My second assumption is that you are new to Church 360 Unite. Now I know we have both current Church 360 Unite users as well, as well as some potential users who are, are investigating whether or not this is the right fit for their church. Uh, have no fear, this will not be a sales pitch, or at least I sure hope it doesn't sound like that. It should be all about the software because I know some of you have already decided and you're ready to use it, and, and that's the approach we want to take today. So it's really just about using the software. Lastly, I assume you're extremely busy. Uh, I haven't yet met a person who has not been busy for <laughs> the better part of their career. So I'm assuming you're busy. I value your time. I thank you for spending your time with us today. If you are not finding value in this presentation or something comes up and interrupts you, go ahead and take care of that. We are here to support your ministry. Um, your ministry with people is far more important than anything that I can talk about today. So I just want to make that clear. Um, that's why we record it. That's why we share it with you afterwards. Uh, this is only to support your ministry. So our webinar outline for today, and I know I've already really jumped in here, but um, just a few things. We're going to set up a church website, and I'm going to show you that process. Um, then we're going to talk about launching a communication campaign, and that's where Anna's going to come in and really show us some cool stuff. We're going to focus the discussion around launching VBS at your church, and that's mainly because it's timely, not because Unite was built just for VBS. We're going to show you how the tools can really support any kind of ministry efforts that you're wanting. Um, it is my goal that we will explore all areas of the software, and our outline supports that. So if there's something I miss, please don't uh, hesitate to let us know. Uh, if, we, if we forget to talk about a certain area, just put that in the questions, and we'll, we'll cover that at the end. And that's what the question and answers are for. So those are our four key things that we're going to be getting done today. But throughout it all, I'd like you to ask yourself, and this goes into those questions too, how can I use Church 360 Unite to support my ministry? So we have built this as a tool because every church, every ministry is different, and they do different things. And while they all point to the one Savior, to the one Christ, we go about our, our ministry on this earth in different ways. And so we've built a tool that helps support those different things. And if you have questions about how we can support that, please don't hesitate to ask. So let's go ahead and get started. There we go. Um, all right, let me switch to my screens over here. 
All right, there you go. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. So this is our um, training webinar site. You'll see that in the URL. I'm going to go through a few of the basics before I pass it off to Anna to get really into some of the, the nitty-gritty details. So when you have created your site, um, and, I, and I say it, it's a, a simple process through our um, startup tool, and it kind of leads you through a few key questions, um, but I'll show you what those things are. So when you get in here, you're going to get to this view where you've got this black bar across the top, and that's your admin bar. On the left-hand side, you have an edit page tab. I'll look at that shortly. On the far bottom right, you've got the information center. And this is your help system where you can go to get any kind of information you need on how to use this. So um, one of the first things of the setup process will be to enter your church's information. And so that will include your church's name, email, phone number, and address, as well as your time zone. And um, those first four things will show up in your site in a variety of different ways. They'll show up in your footer, uh, sometimes in your header, depending on your theme. And we'll talk about themes in a second. But those will just be there automatically pre-populated after the setup process. In the settings area, you have a few other options here. You've got a calendars area, and we'll look at that a little later as we go and, and set up a calendar and talk about permissions with that. You can add a domain to your site. What I mean by domain is the actual website address, the URL, that is um, a little bit more memorable than something like training webinars, training-webinars.360unite. So if you wanted, for example, www.360unite.com, that is a domain. So if you want yourchurch.org, you can put that in the domain, and we've given you the instructions on how to set that up. From a reporting standpoint, in terms of how your site is managed, uh, who's visiting, where are they coming from, what are they doing online on your site, we um, allow a quick integration with Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a free tool that Google provides that gives you more information than you could possibly know what to do with on your website. And I say that as a, a marketer who spends a lot of time on Google Analytics. There's an endless amount of data that you can get and a lot of customizations. And again, it's completely free. So we leave the reporting and analytics to Google, and we just make it easy for you to sign up with them. Lastly, there's the integration button, and this allows you to integrate with Shepherd Staff, our, our PC-based church management software. If you utilize Church 360 members, there is an automatic integration right off the bat with Shepherd Staff. You can have uh, take advantage of many of those same integration features, but it's a manual process by adding this token and your subdomain into your Shepherd Staff database. And so you can send your membership information from Shepherd Staff to Church 360 Unite. And, and we'll touch on that in a few points where that integration is. It makes it work out very well to have all your data stored in, in one place and shared with your website. To the left of settings is themes, and this is the second part of setting up your site. Um, there are 10 different themes that you can use, and I, I realize that I've got a couple extra ones in here. Those are from previous trainings. I should have cleared those out. But you, we've got 10 different themes, and we're adding themes all the time. In fact, I, I just saw the, the specs for our next two themes that we'll be releasing later on this summer, and, and it's pretty exciting. I think they're going to be two of our best ones. So. Um, Themes are part of your package. You can switch your themes at any time. There's no additional fee. There's very little effort to do it. It's essentially pointing and clicking and clicking apply theme. All your content stays. All your pages stay. It just is how your site looks that you can change it. And so we start off with these 10 different themes, but then you can customize them and you can see what it looks like. So we're using the light theme for this training webinar, but if I wanted to switch to a different version of the light theme, I could click on this, what we call preset. It's a preset collection of options for your theme. So um, if you wanted a red silk theme, you could apply that and, and put it in place here. I prefer this autumn theme. I just like the colors in that. Um, but then you have other options here. So you've got presets, which are predefined versions of this, but you can customize it to be your own colors, to be your own background, um, to be your own banner image, even your own font. And so um, that's what this is here. Now, you don't have to use this. If, if you're not familiar with HTML or CSS, you probably want to avoid the advanced and the edit section. But we allow you to put in any custom headers and custom scripts, JavaScript and the like. Um, 
that go directly into your code base for your site. So if you know what to do there, you'll know what to do here. <laughs> but if you don't, you don't have to worry about it. We take care of all the rest for you. You really don't have to have any knowledge of web design to start using this. Now, if you are really advanced, um, if you know for a fact exactly how you want your site to look and you know how to program for that, we give you the tools to do that as well. And so we allow you to, under the edit, you can clone this theme or any of our 10 themes and build your own from there. And so you use our theme as a starting point and it'll give you access to all the code. Now, my congregation is blessed with a great web designer who designed our, our website from scratch. He also happens to work with me here at the publishing house. I know not every church has that and we don't assume that any every church has somebody even remotely close to that and that's why we just provide this as an option if you know how to use it but if not it's okay. So those are the themes. I'm going to go into this home page here and um, you can see the list of pages up here under pages. This is the navigation. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail, but this is our home page, the first page on here. And you can see that um, this is, has the theme that we set up with the autumn color in the background. We've put our logo in here. This is actually an image up there for our church, Light of Christ Lutheran Church. And then I've added these images in here. And these images were created using a tool called Canva, C-A-N-V-A. It's a free photo editing tool online. They have some paid options, but I use it all the time because it's really easy to use. And then this is some stock photography that we've purchased put in here. But it's always best at your church to use photographs of real life people in your congregation. But um, that's all that went into here is just four pictures. And I'll show you how you can go in there and manipulate them. So when you click on the edit page, you will see up here you've got layout options. And we were picking the one with a, a banner across the top or any kind of information across the top and then three columns below. And that's what we have. So the top horizontal area and the three columns below. We can then click within here and we've got our what we call our WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. It's just like within Microsoft Word or Outlook. And you can just click in there and start typing text. Now, we're not going to save any of that today because we really don't need to. Whoops, at that point. You can use all the keyboard shortcuts that you normally have. Now, um, if you know how to program, if you know HTML, we give you access to the source code here. So I want to remove that extra spacing that I just added. I can go in here and manipulate that with the code. So we'll show you that in a little bit more practical example later on. Uh, to the far left, you've got your page status, which is draft or published. Um, if you want to work on a page and not have everybody see it yet, you can put that as draft. Then you've got your URL, your page title, which shows up here. So your URL is what shows up after that. And then your page title will show up in the very top of um, the page. That's what also shows up in Google search results. And same with the meta description. That doesn't show up anywhere on your site, but when you Google your site, that's the text that'll show up below your page title. And that's about it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to go into more detail now on here because I want to get into the project that we're going to be working on today. So let me switch back over to my PowerPoint. And we're going to talk today about launching a VBS campaign. A VBS communication campaign, pardon me. Um, and what I mean by this is we, we're we going to do basically six specific things. I think I've got my number right, maybe seven. We'll walk through each one of those. So the first thing we're going to do is show you how to invite users to your site. Uh, then we'll show you how to use those, take those users and build them into a planning group where they can log in and interact and, and talk with each other. We'll show you how to add VBS events to the calendars, create a landing page to direct people to. A landing page is just a specific website where people can land to get the information they need. We'll show you how you can engage site visitors to go to that landing page by switching up the banner on the home page. We'll create a blog post um, and show you how to use feeds so that you can um, have this content, this uh, up-to-date content that directs people to other places in your site. And lastly, we'll show you how to email members. So I counted wrong, it's seven. But I'm going to let Anna take over here. So Anna, I'm going to turn your audio back on. Are you still there? I'm still here. 
Good, I haven't put you to sleep yet. That's always great. <laughs> so we're gonna, I'm going to switch over to you being the presenter. And I'll make sure that we'll try to do this handoff. Oops. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Change presenter. And here we go. And then you should be able to select which screen it is, and then I'll let you go from there. Okay, well, welcome everybody. I'm really excited to be here. And we're going to start off on our little walkthrough by going through users. And users, to me, is one of the best parts of Unite. It's what makes your website more than just a static page. It's a way for members at your church to connect with each other and talk. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add our VBS planning committee as users to our Unite site. So to do that, it's a pretty simple process. You go down to your Add People button, and that's within the Users tab of the admin view. Now you have a couple options here. You can add people individually, so you could put their first name, last name, or email, or you can import them from a CSV file. And for those of you who might not be super familiar with CSV, it's basically like an Excel worksheet. So you can download a template, and hopefully you can see there it downloaded to my screen. And we'll open up that template just so you can see what it looks like. And I'll move it over here. So you can see that we provide you with a template. You can put a ton of first names, last names, emails in there if you have a large group of users you want to add to your Unite site. Now, thankfully, today we already have our template already, so I'm going to click this Import from CSV button right here. And you can see right here we have a CSV file, VBS users. We're just going to open that. And you can see they auto-populated in the Add People screen there. You can double-check that everybody's names are right, and when you're ready, you can just click Add. And we'll wait a couple minutes here just for Unite to catch up with us. You'll see there's this little message. It says successfully added four people. So that's really great, really exciting. And you can see we have way more than four users in our user list right now. That has to do with what Peter was saying earlier, how you can integrate Unite with Church360 members and also with Shepherd staff. So these are some of our users from Church360 members. Once uh, you have your users here. You can filter by name, and we're going to try and find one of our new users, Marilyn Underhill. And you can see right here. There she is. And users can have different roles. And roles are really permission groups to edit different parts of your site. So if you want to edit Marilyn's role, you select her name from the box up here, and then click Change Roles. You can see here we have four different roles. The None role is just the person is a user, they can't log in, they can't edit any pages, anything like that. The user role is kind of the default role when you add people. They can log in, but they can't really edit much content. But users can always interact with other users. So when we get later to our discussion boards and things like that, that's where the user role is really going to come into play. There's a publisher role. That means you can edit content. So Marilyn is going to be our VBS coordinator today. We're going to pretend that's her job. And so she's going to be a publisher. She can edit things. She can add things. An administrator can do everything. They can manage themes and settings like Peter was talking about. So we're just going to update Marilyn's role to administrator for now. Click the blue update button. And you should see the next time we go to Marilyn, her role says publisher right here, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you're not an administrator, there are a few ways you can see where these users are located. So we're going to close out of the admin bar right here. Go to our ministries tab and then scroll down here to members. I'm going to just click on that right now. And this is a church directory feature. Hopefully you have it on your screen right now. That's built into every Church360 Unite account. So one thing we really want people to do with Church360 Unite is to be able to talk with each other when they're not at church. So you can comment, you can find people's names and phone numbers, anything you want. So as an administrator, you can control which names and numbers are listed in the directory. And as a user, you can control your own information. So we're going to just click on Marilyn's personal profile here. 
and you can see she has no listed phone numbers and she has an email address here. Now, if you want to edit somebody's settings or your own settings for your household, you can do that by clicking on the Edit Household button. And here's a Anna, I think we lost your audio there. Let's see. Let me, uh, I'm sorry for the delay. All of a sudden it seemed to go out. Can the audience hear me talking? Because I can't hear Anna anymore. Okay, good. Well, Anna, maybe reconnect and, and log back in. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Switch back to me as the presenter for a second. Peter? Yep, there you are. Okay, are we back? I think so. I don't know what happened <laughs> there. But let me go ahead and switch back to you as the presenter. All these things, these fun things happen for us. So I know okay. I have a, a bad headset, so I wasn't sure if it was just me or... <laughs> no. All right. Okay. Well, I think um, the last we heard was when you were editing the household. Okay, great. So we're going to go back into our members directory, find Marilyn again, and then click on Marilyn's name right here. And this is going to open up Marilyn's individual profile. And to update her profile picture, you can just click on this little picture icon. Um, you can choose the default portrait, which is this, this little gray guy. You can use a gravatar, which is a universal avatar. And you can click on this link to learn a little bit more about that, hopefully. That's not loading again. Let's just try and go back. Uh, might have to do with our admin view. Um, I think that might just be a minor bug. We recently switched it so that the admin okay. view is in an iframe. And I think some of the links will um, be blocked for security purposes. So for regular users, that'll work fine. OK, but for Marilyn today, we'll just do a custom profile picture. So you choose custom right here. Choose file. Uh, we have Marilyn's picture stored right here. We'll click open and then update profile. So hopefully, once that saves, You'll be able to see there's Marilyn right there, our VBS coordinator. So that's how you go about adding users, changing your profile, and things like that. Now, if you had a bunch of users, you could do this one by one, or you could invite people from your congregation to do that themselves. But we're, we're really going to dig into the VBS group page right now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a group page. And a group page is a way for members in a certain planning committee or volunteer group to work with each other, to communicate, to share files, all those sorts of things. So to start creating a group page, you click the Pages tab on the admin bar, and then you're going to go over here to this Add Page icon. Hopefully everybody can see that. Click on that, and you have all sorts of different options for a page. You can have a blank page. You can see we have a template for worship times, all these sorts of things. You can have a feed page, which we'll get into a little bit later. That's where you can put things like blogs. But for today, for our VBS walkthrough, we're going to create a groups page. So you just cr click the group little icon and then click create page. And you can see that over here on the right hand side, it says available menu items and then it says groups. So I'm just going to rename this to VBS since this is going to be the VBS group page. I'm going to click enter and now I need to move this to my menu bar. The available menu items are just items, pages that could be on your site but maybe are getting ready, maybe are for a draft, things like that. 
and we're going to move our available VBS page over to our Ministries tab. And by moving it over to this Active Menus Items page, that's making it live on our site. That means it's going to the site navigation, things like that. You can also change the privacy settings for this. So you can see right now our VBS page is going to be members only. That means that only people who are logged in as users can see this site. You can make it a public page or a private page as well. So we're just going to save our changes. There's a little green button up here. Your changes have been saved. Then we're going to close out of the admin bar. And if we go to Ministries, we'll see that VBS got added onto our site navigation right here. So we're going to click on that. So here's our VBS group page. And you can see it looks pretty empty right now, but we're going to add to that in a couple minutes. We're going to make it look a bunch better. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to edit our group settings. And you just click on this Edit This Group option right over here on the right-hand side. And this is where you can add a description to your page. You can add sub pages for your group. You can see who is visible for the group and who can in the group. So the first thing we'll want to do is we're going to want to edit the description of our page. And we have a little description already. Anna, I think we're losing you again. See, this was what happens even when you test out all the audio. Sometimes things don't work. If I'm still not hearing you, and I need to uh, jump back to my screen, we can. It shows that Anna's talking, but it's uh, not coming out in the audio. I do apologize for this. I love the technical difficulties. Well, let me go ahead and switch back over to my air, my screen while we get Anna up and running again. Now, thankfully, Anna and I talked previously, and, and I can jump in here if needed. So we'll head back to the group screen. Let me just refresh my page. I'll head over here to the VBS. And you can see and there's that edit the group page where she was. So hopefully we'll get Anna back soon. I still can't hear you. I just saw your note. But we'll go ahead and start adding pages while she gets her audio fixed. All right, so let's see. So we've got the, the group description that we can put in here. And um, I will pull that up from our extra copy that we have. So the description, oh, I think we've got you back. Are you there, Anna? I'm here. Do you know what's happening? Is it the, a bad uh, plug? Or? It, the internet connection keeps going out. I think that's Oh, no. Yeah. Well, that's not good. There was one time where I was leading a webinar and I rolled over my cord with my chair and unplugged it. I couldn't figure out what happened. So at least you know what's going on. If you get up and run it, we will go ahead and switch it right back to you. And I'll, I'll follow along on my screen so that if it does go out again, we'll be able to have you up and running. So, all right, I'll switch it back to you. In fact, I'll probably request keyboard and mouse control in case. Sounds good. So, thank you, everyone, okay. for your patience. <laughs> okay, I think we're switching back to my screen right now. It should look the same as the screen that Peter was on. And I think Peter was just about to edit the description for our page. So I'll do that right now. We have some copy in here. We'll just do that. It says VBS Barnyard Roundup. One of the cool things about Unite is you can have sub pages for your group. So we're going to make a couple of those right now and come back to them later. So one page we're going to make, we're going to make a decorating page. And this would be for people 
on our VBS planning committee who are just concerned with the decorations. This will be a way for them to talk and chat and share resources. So you can see I typed that in, I clicked add page, and over here our page is a draft right now. That's because we haven't edited it, we haven't done anything with it yet. It's not ready for people to see. We're also going to add a resources page. A cool thing about Church 360 Unite is that it lets you upload files, pictures, things like that to share with other people at your church and on your team. So you can see we added our sub pages here. And we're also going to see who our group details are visible to. So for this VBS page, we're going to have the home page visible to everyone, but the discussion page and the events are only going to be visible to our group members since people in the church at large or in the public don't really need to know what the planning community is doing is on at all times. And I'm going to set my join, who can join this group settings, to only people I have invited. That means that once I send out invitations in a few minutes, only those people in my group can join it. Nobody else from church can see it. So we're going to click Update Group. And our page will load again. Now we're going to actually get to updating and adding members. So I'm going to click on this Members tab over here. And we're going to add the members that we had just added as users a few minutes ago. So we're going to look for Marilyn. We're going to add her as a member. And you can see Marilyn's picture appears right up there at the top. And our other planning committee members are Haley, Haley Dane. We have Larry Clifford, add member. And then I'm going to type in Joanna Arrington. It looks like Joanna didn't get added. That's OK. Now, since we were talking before, Marilyn is the group leader. So we're going to click her and then click Change Role. And we're going to promote her to the leader since she is our VBS director. So you can see right now we have two group leaders. We can take Peter off of a group leader just demote him to member. So this is a good way to organize who has what permissions and controls within those group pages. The next thing you can do in a group page is you can create a discussion. So if members of your group wanted to ask, what's the best day for a meeting? You could type that in the discussion and then post it. And then you can see people can reply to your comment, you can edit your own comment, all these sorts of things like that. The next thing we're going to get to is editing some of those groups pages that we had created a couple minutes ago. And so we want to go to our decorating page right here. So it's a, a blank slate. So we're going to click on edit page. This Peter was showing us a little bit earlier. This is where you can change the visibility. So we're going to make this published. You can change the layout, all sorts of things like that. So we'll just add our copy back in here. You can also add a picture, which we're going to do next. So you can just, in the edit page, page mode, click in the box, and then this little editor bar will come up. Click on the picture icon. And then you can upload your own image. And we should have an image ready to go right here. It's loading right now. Here's our image. And then I'm just going to click OK. Oh, and you can see that image is very out of proportion. So you can go into the image properties. And you can change the width, the height, everything like that. So let's try this. That looks a little bit better. So you can do this, play around with it as you like on your group's pages. When you're all set, just hit save. Another thing you can do is add files. So we're going to go into our resources page and link to a file for this page. So this is going to be a little bit different. And we're going to link to a picture. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to click our link button. And we want to link to a file that users can download. So this can be any type of file. I'm just going to upload one of our pictures right here. 
But other than pictures, you could also have maybe meeting notes and agendas. You could have PDF documents, Word documents, any types of files. So for right now, we're going to do that. And you can see it kind of looks a little silly here with this big, long URL. We can change the name of that. So instead of that, we can just do VBS picture. And we'll go through the same process. Select our text. Click the file upload. Select the file. And then we're good to go. See, that looks a lot better. Okay, once you're ready, you can just hit Save Changes. And now anybody in your, your group can access that picture file, your meeting notes, your PDF, Excel, Word document, anything like that. The next important thing we want to do is create some events for our group. And since this is the VBS Planning Committee, you'll want to put some planning event meetings on our calendar. So just click the New Events button. I'm going to type VBS Planning Meeting right here. And you can see it belongs to the VBS calendar in the calendar visibility right here. It says this event will be visible to members. That means that only people who are members of our VBS group page, so Marilyn, Haley, Larry, and Peter, can see this event. So we're going to add a start date and an end date. We're going to have this event go on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock, 5 to 6 p.m. And we're also going to have it repeat every Wednesday until VBS starts. So for our church, VBS is going to start um, the week of June 15th, I believe. So we want our meetings to be on Wednesday. We want the meetings to start this week, and we want them to end before the VBS start date. So we'll have them end on June 8th. You can add a description for the event. So here's our event planning page. And you can also select if you want to invite people to the event. So you can see your options here. I'll let the screen catch up. Any of your group members can be invited, and we want all our group members to be invited. Unite also can send out reminders to people invited to the event. So we'll select a reminder for one day before and six hours before, just so nobody forgets our important planning meeting. When you're all ready, you can just hit Create Event. We'll wait for our screen to load. And you can see now we have a VBS planning calendar with all our meetings through the rest of May and June. So that's a little bit about groups. But we know that VBS is something for the whole congregation. It's not just for our planning committee. So we're going to transition a little bit here, and we're going to show you how we can make VBS visible to everybody at your congregation, everybody to visit her website. So we're going to make an event for VBS as a whole. And to do that, we want to add a children's ministry calendar. So I'm going to go up here to my settings in the admin bar. Click on calendars, let my screen catch up a little bit, and then up next to this create calendar box, I'm going to write children's ministry. So you can see we have all sorts of calendars right now in our Unite site. Once you have your name ready, you can pick create calendar, and you see children's ministry appears right down here at the bottom. You can color code your calendars to make it easy for people at your church to view, so we'll make this red to go along with the worship theme. You can also edit the children's ministry visibility. Since VBS is somebody, something for everybody at your church and for visitors, we want everybody to see the children's ministry calendar. You can click Save. And that will put the children's ministry calendar on your main Unite Events calendar page. So we're going to go over on our site to News and click on Calendar. Now, just like that church directory page, this calendar page is built into Church 360 Unite. So you can see we have some worship events there. We have Board of Elders meeting, everything like that. But we haven't created VBS yet, so that's what we're going to do next. Click on New Event right here. We're going to have Vacation Bible School. Hopefully I can type a little bit better. For calendars, we're going to apply it to our children's ministry calendar. And since the children's ministry calendar is visible to everybody, our Vacation Bible School event is also going to be visible to everyone. 
you can add a location, a start time, and an end time. Now, RVFBS is going to start on June 13th, and I went way past it. And it's going to be from 5 to 7 p.m. every weekday. So I'll select this event repeats, and we'll select the days. So we're going to have VBS go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it'll start on June 13th. You can pick it from your calendar selector there. We're going to have it end on Friday the 17th. And then you can put a description. So welcome to VBS Barn Yard Roundup. You can select whether you want to invite people to the event and also add some reminders, just like you could in that group's event. But again, this event is more public than that event on the group's page. We'll click Create Event. You get a nice little reminder message, Vacation Bible School is created. And you can also see that from here, you can RSVP to the event. So I'm going to mark that I'm going to Vacation Bible School. That's always fun. You can ask questions and comments. You can view participants. You can even add it to your own Google Calendar or invite a friend by clicking these buttons over here. And we'll just double check up here in our calendar. Go to June. And you can see that Vacation Bible School, once my site loads, got added for the week of June 13th for all the times we had listed. Um, that's all I had about calendars. Peter, do you have anything to add with calendars? I think the one thing to point out is that your calendar view is unique to you. So you'll see that the VBS planning meeting is still on there. That's because you're logged in as an administrator. And in the top right there, you can select the different calendars. So if you have too many events and you want to narrow your focus down, you can go and say, all right, well, let's take off our formation. VBS Planning Committee, Board of Elders, and just show me those few things. And, and that's unique to each user based on their permissions, what groups they're in, whether they're logged in or not. So it's really a unique experience for each person. Yeah, thanks for adding that, Peter. Sure. So now that we have our group page set, we have our calendar set, the next thing we want to do is create a VBS landing page. So to do that, we're going to go back up to Pages in the admin bar. Um, and I'm going to go to Add Page again. And this time, rather than adding a groups page, I'm just going to add a blank page. We'll do Create Page. And I'm going to name this one Vacation Bible School. Click Enter. And then I'm going to move that again over to our Ministry section. One nice thing I like over here is you can rearrange the order of things. You can move them into different categories, everything like that. I'm going to make this Vacation Bible School page public so that people coming to our church site can really see what we're doing. Click Save Changes. It'll let me know my changes have been saved. Then I'm going to click out of my Pages bar, go back to my navigation. Here's Vacation Bible School. So again, this is going to be the landing page that's for everyone. So we want it to look really great. So to start editing that page, I'm going to go over here to my Edit Page menu on the side. And I'm going to pick a little bit different of a layout this time. I'm going to have my banner on the top and room for text in the middle. And then I'm going to add something real special on the side here. So instead of just saying Vacation Bible School over here, we're going to add a picture. I'm going to go to my Add Picture. We'll upload a banner. And hopefully that works a little bit better than last time. But if not, we can always change those proportions. Once the file is uploaded, we'll do that. I'm going to go back here, Image Properties. We'll edit the height. Unlock that ratio. There we go. That looks a lot better. So we'll have our Barnyard Roundup logo up there. I'm going to add my copy back in. going to do that. We're also going to add a little groups widget here, and that's really to link to our other VBS Planning Committee groups page. So you just click in the little rich text editor box, 
I'm going to click this Groups widget, and you can select which group you'd like to be over here. So we're going to select BBS. You can choose small, medium, large size. We'll make this one medium. Um, and you can see this is the description we had from the BBS page on the other site. So we're going to edit some of that out. Okay. You can also link to pages within here, everything like that. Once you have everything set, you can change your meta description like Peter was saying. That's for Google. So welcome to our church's vacation Bible school. You would probably want to put your church name in there to help index it for search engines. Then you can click Save. And now this will be our landing page where we're going to direct people for Vacation Bible School this year. Just want to check my outline quick and make sure I got everything. It looks like I did. Peter, do you have anything to add about that? No, I think you've got it all covered. I think you're okay. doing just fine. Sounds good. So the last thing we want to do is we want to add a link to VBS from our home page. So once I've saved, I'm going to click home. And what we're going to do, the goal of this is to add, switch out this Gospel Mark link with our VBS logo. So as soon as people come to Light of Christ Lutheran Church, they see that we have VBS and we want you to come. So I'm in my edit page mode for the home page. I'm going to click on the picture right here, and you can see my picture is going to get selected, highlighted blue. I'm going to select the picture bar again up here. I'm going to upload a new image. So we're going to upload a big VBS image here. It's just loading right now. There we go. You can see it added right on the bottom here. I'll click on that. Click OK. And now we have a big VBS banner. Now one final thing I want to do. We don't want people just to see the Barnyard Roundup logo and think, oh, that's great. I don't know what to do next. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a link to our VBS page from the home page. So I'm just going to right click on this. Oh, I'm actually going to click this link button up here. And you can link to any URL, so an outside site, a file like we were saying before. But this time we're going to link to that VBS page, Vacation Bible School, from our site. Click OK. Click Save. And now, hopefully, I'm going to exit my edit page mode. Hopefully, when you click on this, it'll take you right to that landing page. I know it's waiting to load for you guys. So that's a good way to direct people around your site, site to suggest to them which pages are going to be most important and most relevant right off the bat. Now, one final thing we want to do, and I know we have only a few minutes left here, is we want to add an announcement about Vacation Bible School to our blog. And to do that, we're going to go to our site navigation. We're going to go up to News and Announcements. And this is our little announcements page for Light of Christ Lutheran Church. So Unite has this built-in blogging feature. You could have a feed for your pastor's blog, you could have a general church announcements feed, you can have as many feeds as you want. And I'll show you in a couple minutes how to manage those feeds, how to see, control who's commenting and what they're commenting so that people aren't coming to your church site and getting confused about some comments. So what we want to do is we want to add a new Vacation Bible School announcement. So click on edit page and we're going to make a new post. The default title is new post but you definitely don't want to keep it at that so we'll do vacation Bible school is coming. Then we can add our text back in there. We can even do our link to our VBS page. So again I'm going to type my link name in there. Then I'll click the link button. I want to link to any page or feed on my site, and we want to link to Vacation Bible School. So see, we're always directing people to that VBS page so they can get more information. We can also add an image up in here, so I'll do that just very quickly at our low resolution. While it's loading, I'm going to click on that. I'm going to see what the height is. That looks a little bit better. Here we go. Once that's set, you can click Create. 
and now you can see, I'm going to save our feed, and now you can see, once I click the edit page, close out of that, that Vacation Bible School is coming. It's going to be a new post on our site. There we go. That's what our post looks like. Now, as I was saying a little bit earlier, people can comment on their post, um, and you can choose the settings for that. So to choose the settings for that, you would actually go up to Admin Bar and Post, select which post. You can choose change feeds, you can see comments, all sorts of things like this. And we're not going to get too far into that right now. But just so you know, you can always control who's commenting, what they're saying, and what's going to appear on your website. So that's a little bit about feeds. So the final step we're going to do today is we're going to add a mailing list. To do that, you're going to go into Users, and this time you're going to select Mailing List. Now, mailing lists are ways to organize the email addresses of the people in your church so you can communicate with them quickly and efficiently. So we're going to make a brand new mailing list. You can see we already have some in here. And I'm going to name this Vacation Bible School. So you just type the name in, click the Create Mailing List blue button, and you'll see it gets added down here. Now, simply creating the list doesn't mean we've added any people to the list, so we need to change that. So you'll just need to click on your name, and you can see, hopefully, in this middle box, it says, select the recipients of Vacation Bible School. So you can select who is going to get VBS emails. So we definitely want our VBS planning committee group to get the emails. And you can see I type VBS in here, and this little icon right next to VBS means that we're adding a group of people to a mailing list. Now you can add other things besides groups to a mailing list. You can also add individual people. So I'm going to add Kent Williams. Hopefully he'll show up there. He's our fictional pastor for our church, and it looks like he's not in there. That's no worries. We'll add it. Well, at Derek Woods, I think he's the youth director at our church. So you can add individual people, and you could also add, make a list of lists. So if I wanted to add website administrators, I can also add them to my Vacation Bible School mailing list. So you can really tailor mailing lists to be the group of people you want it to be, nothing more and nothing less. Once you've selected your audience for your email list, just click this green Save button and your email list will be ready to go. Now, once you're ready to set, send an email to your list, you'll just click on this list name, the little checkbox right here, and then you'll go down to the bottom of your screen, and you can see it says, Actions for Selected Mailing Lists. I'm going to click Email, and it's opening my default mail client, and we have Microsoft Outlook here. So you can compose your message, get it all ready to send, and you'll see the to address has a lot of weird letters and numbers about it. Don't worry about that. Our servers here use an email relay service. So what happens is when you have your text ready, so I'm going to write, Vacation Bible School is coming June 13th. Once you're ready to send, the email will go to our relay service. It'll match your emails with the people on your list, and then it'll send the email out to like your church. And we're not going to save our changes right now because those are some fictional emails. That's all I have about email relay services. If we were actually sending an email, you also can view the status of your emails to let you know if they got sent and everything like that. So Peter, that's all I had on my outline. Would you like to add anything about mailing lists or anything else? No, I think you did a really good job. Maybe just one thing to add is that when you send the email relays out to people, um, it will come just to them as an individual email from you so that if somebody responds, they respond directly to you, which is great because some email services are coming from a server and the, the sent email address will just direct you back to uh, like a no reply. And our emails don't do that. It'll take you directly back to the person who sent it in their inbox, just like in your Outlook. And so you can keep that conversation going. It'll also be just a one-to-one -one so you're not sending the the email to the, the replies to everybody on the list. So if you're sending a whole church email, it doesn't get into one of those annoying email chains. 
Well, thank you so much for covering all of that, Anna. I think you did an excellent job. And we're going to move back over to my slides to um, just, here we go, show a couple things real quick. If you have any questions at this time, please go ahead and submit those into the chat. We actually have um, had no questions before this, so I think that means that we've done a good job of covering the details. So while we get questions, um, go ahead and show you that you can start your free 30-day trial at 360unite.com if you haven't already started using that. And if you have any questions for us, um, here's our contact information again. So there's my name and email address, peter.frank at cph.org, and you can contact Anna at anna.johnson at cph.org. Our phone number's there. If you are interested in learning more, maybe having a personalized demo that you could ask very specific questions about your church and how it would work in your situation, our team would love to talk to you about that. Um, let's see here. I think we're ready to go and answer some questions. So, well, the very first question is a, a real easy one. Are there notes from the presentation available to download or print? There's not actually notes, but we will have the recording available. And, um, and I can make the slides available too, although the slides don't have nearly as much value as the presentation that Anna did that shows all the specifics. Um, but we'll be putting the recording up on our YouTube channel later today or tomorrow, and we'll send you a note with that and then you can share that with those who uh, may need to hear that too but um Yes, that's a great question. We're always happy to give more information. If you um, have any specific questions about the content um, or if there's more that you would like to be able to do, let us know and we'd be happy to dig into that too. All right. Well, I'm going to give another minute or so for questions. Uh, I do appreciate you all being here. I don't think we have anything else. Well, Thank you very much for attending. Anna, thank you again for uh, leading that discussion on the VBS portion of it. It's a great cohesive uh, communication plan that I think is easily replicated with any kind of event. So thank you for being here today. And we are going to go ahead and sign off. Everyone have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys.